very much. Uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for the opportunity of talking to you. It's very interesting because I've been obviously uh, know some of the companies here today and I, I hold uh, many of the people here up as role models of what I'm trying to achieve at Scandia. So it's quite interesting now to be the person here talking to you uh, about some of the things that uh, we're doing, but actually some of that is based on some of the experiences and uh, hearing some of the people, um, the organisations here speak. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, what we're tr what the journey we're on at Scandia, and it is a journey, uh, we're by no means finished yet, and so I will obviously set the context as to where we are along that route. Um, on our move towards becoming a, more of an online platform rather than a traditional insurance company that many of, us, many of you will know us as. So I'm just going to start off by saying who we are as a company. Um, a bit about our journey towards self-serve. Um, the challenges that we have faced and are facing along the way. Um, a little bit about the human relationship and how that fits in because uh, being online for us is not just about everything being online, it's about choice for our customers. I'm going to cover a little bit about that and a little bit about uh, what next for us as an organisation. So for those of you who don't know us as a company, uh, Scandia UK was founded in 1979. We have 1,600 employees, uh, predominantly based in Southampton on the south coast. Uh, of that number, just to uh, set the context, uh, 360 of that 1,600 people work in my part of the world in, in customer experience. Uh, and I will come about what customer experience therefore means, because I know it means very different things in different organisations uh, when I get to uh, a bit about who I am. Last year, we took our £5.26 billion worth of new investments, and in total, we currently manage uh, £33.4 billion worth of investments. We're part of Old Mutual Group, and Old Mutual, uh, many of you will know, is a FTSE 100 company, uh, based predominantly, um, whilst it's listed here in, in London and it has its headquarters here in London, uh, most of its employees are based in South Africa. It was founded in 1845, has a portfolio of businesses across 34 countries, uh, 54,000 employees. Uh, it acquired us in 2006, which is really when our journey towards becoming a platform uh, began. Uh, and it currently has £267 billion worth of uh, funds under management across all of its business entities. So it's a uh, significant organisation. And Old Mutual's vision is to become uh, our customers' most trusted partner, passionate about helping them achieve their lifetime financial goals. And that has actually very much uh, been shaping and inspiring our, our journey that we're now on to actually becoming more customer um, intimate. A little bit more about who I am, apart from having a wife, um, obviously three young daughters and two rabbits. I've actually been with Scandia for 25 years and uh, in a quite nomadic, perhaps. I uh, started Scandia just after college uh, in IT as a uh, trainee analyst programmer, then analyst programmer, went off to do some online work uh, in its very early incarnations, eventually became head of IT, uh, then decided to have a complete change uh, and moved over to marketing. Uh, but keeping the, some of the IT interests with me. Uh, then, four years ago, as we started to launch the platform, left the IT space completely uh, to move over to head up the new e-business area. And part of my role there was to create uh, the, on, the uh, web part of the new platform. And then last year, I moved into operations as head of customer experience, but taking with me um, some of the project teams, delivery teams, um, the e-business team also into that mix. So my role predominantly is to uh, drive forward our ambitions to become an online provider and to ensure we have consistency um, across all of our different channels. So the digital channel, the telephone, written word, and also the face-to-face. -face. So a bit about Scandia and where we are today. We're actually, we find ourselves a very far, and I'm sure this is very true for all of you. I'm, no, we're just a, um, a part of this whole industry. But it's a very fast-changing environment. In 2007, we uh, launched our platform. That uh, was towards the end of 2007. And if I look, um, just to set how that, so we were a very traditional business before, very paper-based, small online presence. Last year, 97% of our applications came in through the online channel. Um, so a complete shift in that four years. So we're finding ourselves um, increasingly migrating to an online channel, uh, online model, with technology completely at the heart of what we do. And uh, when I come to some of the challenges we face, 
clearly that shift from paper to um, technology has been uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, challenge for us. Alongside that, Scandia uh, only sells business through uh, financial advisors, independent financial advisors in the UK. But one of our ambitions, one of the old mutual ambitions, is that we should become, um, as you saw, one of our customers' most valued partners. And to do that, we need to become more customer intimate. We're very aware with the RDR challenge coming along that our, um, the advisor landscape is going to change at the end of the year. We'll potentially have a larger book of customers who are um, no longer advised. So we need to offer those people a service. And we are now finding increasingly, when we go out and talk to our customers, they want to do more themselves. They actually want to, they feel more enlightened. They actually feel that there are times they want to go to their advisor. There's time when they would like to come to us. And so we were very, um, I would say customer unintimate, but we were actually, we were very, because we were completely intermediated, it was actually quite a challenge to understand what our customers' needs and goals were. So we've actually spent a lot of time in the last two years uh, completely changing our focus to become much more customer intimate, and that is the journey we're now taking to become a, our customer's um, customer intimate organisation. And clearly, again, like you, uh, a lot we're seeing rapidly changing customer behaviours. So what we're seeing across all of our um, across all of the countries where Old Mutual operates. Um, is that actually the basic needs are the same around protection, around uh, investing their money, but how they want to interact with us and the behaviours of our customers is changing quite rapidly. So people wanting to have instant access to data, not being prepared for the traditional five-day SLA that we would have actually offered to, uh, to respond to a letter. No, 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 we want an email back and we want it back within the hour, please. Uh, so completely different behaviour, fast changing, wanting to do it themselves, wanting to have access to data, and wanting it not through the post, but wanting it all electronically. So alongside launching the platform, we are quite clearly part of that was about um, our drive towards self-service. So why do we want to do self-service? Uh, and I'm sure many of you are also uh, have been having these discussions or are perhaps already further along the line than we are. But first and foremost, we want to provide choice to our customers. And so for them, we're, we've been, we spent a lot of time with our customers in the last year asking them, what do you expect from, your, from us, your provider? So increasing customer demand and expectation is part of the main reason for actually driving us towards the online experience. So telling us things like, um, uh, things like, we only want to hear from you when you've got something to say. Don't keep bombarding us with paper. We don't want to have any paper, in fact. We want you just to post all of our documents online. They're telling us that uh, they, want us, they want to know when we've done something on their policy. So they want us to send them an email. They want an alert. They want an SMS. They want to know when we're, when we're crossing over certain um, measures that they've, they've set, that, uh, that, we've, you know, that uh, they need to, we need to alert them on the fund, for example. And they want the data when they want it. They like me, and probably like you, the only time I get around to doing any household bills is when everyone's gone to bed on a Sunday evening, and then I often want to see how much this is worth, move some money between our accounts, whatever it may be. But that is now the sort of lifestyle that we are leading. And um, our customers, typ oh no, typically as my, I am, that's how they want to interact with us. It's also important because our customers are increasingly telling us they want to customise their experience. So some people want to be able to see the document as soon as it was published last night. Some people actually just want to get things a week later. Some people want to get paper. Some people want email. Some people want online. But the fact is, different people now have different demands of us as an organization, as I'm sure they do of you for your organizations. And they want to be able to tailor and customize that experience. And we believe that our journey towards the online channel and using that to supplement our existing channels, not to replace, and that is an important distinction, uh, whilst we are seeing huge adoption of our online channel, uh, because we're obviously promoting it very hard, we are still keeping our traditional channels open for, for our customers. So it allows them to tailor the, the experience to what they want. And for us as an organisation, yes, clearly it's important to us too. Uh, we are a business. We are here for, uh, to give our uh, uh, shareholder value. And of course, the, uh, there's, you've, I'm sure many of you, again, have read the same studies I have, but it does improve customer loyalty and it does improve retention. If your customers are hooked to the services you offer, if you're actually giving them the tools they want to be able to profile their goals, if you're giving them the ability to get their values 
um, at, at 8 o'clock in the evening on a Wednesday or be able to profile what might happen next. They're more inclined to stay with you than they are to move your, their money to someone else who doesn't offer those sorts of services. Of, of course they are, and, um, and I'm sure that'd be true for you, for me, and again, for all of our larger customer base. It also reduces our operating and our breakage costs. Um, the joy and the great benefit of actually putting through the business online is, of course, it is predominantly error-free because it's actually being input, it's being checked as it goes through. And how can I uh, just give you an example of how we measure that? So, uh, as I said, 97% of our business now goes through the, through the platform. 3% uh, goes through our traditional um, book, paper-based online. Our new business departments are actually virtually the same size from the traditional insurance company, Scandia Life, to the platform business that we also operate. Now, the products are slightly simpler, so therefore that's made things easier, but... The fact is, the, the business is actually coming through clean. It's straight through processing. So it actually hits, uh, hits our systems, is processed, dealt with, and the, um, the information is published back online in the way of the contract note without, uh, in a simple case, any, um, any human interaction. Uh, so that actually reduces our breakage costs because, therefore, we're not, at, we're not making the mistakes that we're having to fix a bit further down the line. We actually need less people to process the business and therefore it obviously reduces the whole cost base overall. It also, though, uh, makes our whole operating framework much simpler because we don't need as uh, many, um, our whole structure is actually a little bit less complex. We don't need so many process procedures to keep picking up things that have gone wrong because hopefully the machine is actually doing that for us. We don't need so, um, so many people in the corrections teams. We don't need to have complex procedures in terms of some of the auditing and checking we need to do. So it actually makes the whole operating framework simpler to operate. So I just put on here the current position. I've, I've given you some numbers in terms of the uh, base, but uh, where are we on, on this route? For our advisors, we are largely um, already offering most of the functionality uh, self-serve. So 80% of our new business through the platform is online. About 98% of all valuations are online about 85% of all fund switching, and we are one of the largest fund switchers of uh, unit trusts in, in Europe, Northern Europe, so, uh, and majority of that is actually dealt with through the online platform. So we're, quite, we're doing quite well. As I say, we're not there yet. In terms of our customers, we're actually, we have an online um, customer at Extranet uh, Secure Service, and on there we allow our advisors to do some tailoring of what's offered and we, we have a lower take-up at the moment, but we're actually, uh, uh, for the advisor community, you have to be registered through the platform. For your customers, we're actually still allowing people to, um, to go through themselves. So what have been our challenges, which is obviously one of the key things I was asked to talk about. And I've grouped these into five major headings, and I'm sure actually, again, if I ask most of you here, you'd probably come up with largely the same headings. Um, the move from being a paper-based to an online company and putting all of our reliance on technology was actually possibly the biggest challenge. Uh, we actually had uh, the whole new thing about availability and not, not uh, you know, at 7, I remember uh, before we actually launched the platform, 7.30 p.m., the systems went down, the batch processes came up, everybody went home, uh, we all come back in the next morning and start work. But now suddenly we have people wanting to like me, access the valuations at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever it might be in the evening. They want to do their switching. So we have to have availability. We also uh, had a new challenge around resilience because we knew that the maximum number of people hitting our system would be, uh, using my example, 1,600, if that's the number of people that worked in the UK at the time. We now have 74,000 people registered for our online uh, platform. So it could be anywhere between two people logged in at a time We've never hit anywhere near 74,000 in reality, but we have to plan that at some point, the majority of those people might actually log in and use the system. So we've had to hold, face a whole new piece around resilience, scale, future projections, because we've grown very quickly. Monitoring and forecasting has become a whole, a whole new cottage industry for us. Uh, we have people who, analytics and web monitoring were things that were never really part of our, our agenda, and now are actually very much central to what we do. And, the f and key there as well, so it's not just the internal technology, but the f rapid pace of change for the external technology as well. I mean, I was only thinking, and I was saying to my wife, well, actually my wife was telling me you know, the other night, you know, 
how many more, how much longer is it going to be before we actually can have a discussion in the evening without me feeling I need to surgically remove your iPad from the side of your body? Now, three years ago, that would never have been conceived, would it? No, you would have sat at home, probably had a conversation. I even find myself emailing my wife sometimes, and she's on the opposite chair to me because I think, oh, I just tell her this, because she's busy doing something else. But, um, you know, the pace of technology change is, is rapid. The fact that, um, that whilst we actually believe our tools work in the different technologies, we get the little nuances of, oh, IE9 doesn't quite behave in the same way as a previous version of, of uh, Internet Explorer, or you know, this, we just need to make sure that it works with this piece of tech, this piece of kit. So that was a whole new dimension to what we were doing. We then have so had to uh, support. Our, what we found is our user base were very, very different in terms of their adoption level. Some were very, very clever, um, knew, what, knew what the technology was able to do straight in there. Other people still on the starting blocks. So a whole new piece around actually helping people adopt our technology. Regulation has largely, uh, no, we live in a regulated environment. And in fact, we haven't been able to do some of the things we'd really love to do because old regulation, I'll call it, is actually still stopping us uh, along the way. There's some pensions legislation, for example, you know, it's been around for uh, gazillions of years. Uh, and it actually still talks about stuff we have to send in post, for example. Cross-channel consistency, very, very key, because what we're trying to create is one experience, whether you're using whichever channel you're dealing with us, telephone, uh, internet, email, we need the same look and feel, we need the same uh, tone of voice, we need, to, we need to portray ourselves as one Scandia brand. So that's been a, a, a challenge for us, to actually even come up with a common dictionary across all of our channels. And a very agile approach to changing customer demands, and by that I mean uh, two things really. One is the fact that when people ring us and give us suggestions or they spot a spelling mistake on the web or whatever it might be, you know, despite our, our testing, they actually expect that to be changed, uh, PDQ. They don't expect us to sit on that for n months. So our, our development channels have had to become faster. But equally, um, people can now see where they are, where their cases are, where their processes are in our cycle. So they can see if we've sat on something for two or three days uh, when we've actually said it was going to be dispatched the next day. Because we actually offer choice, uh, unlike other organisations, we have not tried to um, close down our other channels, as I say. So we still maintain a fairly uh, extensive human relationship. Uh, we still have a, con we have a contact centre, which is actually now bigger than it was. What we have done there, though, is now merge all of our UK contact centres into one. But alongside that, we've had to create a, an online support desk. And that's a group of people who actually have to understand more the technicalities around the browsers, around the different technologies our advisors are using, around what the customers might be using, and how to be able to know how to tweak and talk customers through changing their settings, many of which have actually, um, our customer uh, base is, is uh, fairly elderly in some cases, and that can be quite a challenge to talk to them about how to reconfigure their systems. So we've created an online support desk to support, the, um, support our customers. We've also created an online adoption team, and that's a team of people who are spread around the country who go out and spend time with our advisors or, with, um, or with, in some cases with our, our end investors and help them and train them in the use of the technology and to how to adopt the platform, how to move their business from being a paper-based to an online model as well. Because people are actually quite scared of that journey. Uh, you know, if, if you've been in business, if you're an advisor and you've been working in the same way for 30 or 40 years, that actually, that suddenly being confronted with a web screen is actually quite a difficult um, thing to do. So we've actually created an online adoption team, which I believe has actually been very central to the fact of getting us to where we've reached today. And we're still obviously backed up by technical support from experts uh, and from our sales and marketing functions. So what next for us as an organisation? Because that was just an insight of where we got to today. Clearly, most importantly, we still need to carry on understanding our customers' needs. Our customers are asking and uh, more and more for us to uh, create, new uh, create new services. They're actually coming up with some great ideas now on how they want our services to look three years down the line. We've just actually relaunched our, um, our advisor channel, uh, taken on board all the feedback, and we've actually now set up consultation groups around the country for people to come and help tell us how they want it to look. It's their system. So it's, uh, 
at first we started thinking, well, hang on, but we know everything because uh, we, we, have, we have user interface experts and we are all qualified in this. But what we actually found is we don't actually sit there using the systems day in and day out as some of our advisors do. And we're not, um, we don't have anybody who's 82 and uh, try, in our department who actually tries to uh, use the services for the first time. So we need to spend more and more time understanding our customer needs. We need to embrace more technology. So we're just about to move into uh, uh, launching chat. We've just um, started developing our mobile applications. Mobile is very difficult for us because uh, I was very keen that we actually get our web experience working really well before we then departed into uh, creating too many, proliferating too many different channels. Because actually part of it is it's well and good actually having these different channels, but we need to be able to support them back in Southampton in our, in our service center as well. So we need to be able to support the people who are tweeting, the people who are actually doing stuff on Facebook, the people who are actually emailing us, people who are actually using the web channel, people who are still sending it through the post, the people who are, and all of these, we need to have a fairly consistent, as far as consistent as possible support model, but recognizing that each of those has some subtle differences uh, in their application. So to overcome that, we've just created, uh, for example, a customer correspondence area that actually controls all the written words that leave our um, organization. So whether if somebody tweets in, if somebody writes in, they actually get the same team that will actually um, craft the responses back out. So that's adapting our service model to meet the needs of all the different channels. And fundamentally, behind everything, we have to listen. We have to listen in terms of face-to-face. -face. We, we've actually, we talk back to the human thing, we've actually never done so much face-to-face -face, um, consultation groups, customer forums, advisor forums, We've never done so much of it as we do now. And yet, actually, some would say we're moving away from customer because we're trying to be online. But actually, I think it's actually creating us, making us do more because we want people to use our services. We want people to make them their own. So we're actually spending more and more time talking to people, not less. We do callback days. We do, uh, we do surveys at the end of calls so we can get our net promoter score to make sure people are happy when they've spoken to us. We're doing all sorts of feedback mechanisms, but we have to keep listening. And equally, as well as listening to our, our customers, we have to listen to the technology partners. We have to listen to what's happening in the universities out in America and so on, because one of the things we learned is we, um, as technology changes so fast, somehow we need to try and get ourselves a little bit more onto the front foot of, uh, before things hit us. So that's just a brief insight into uh, where Scandia's got to on its journey to becoming uh, an online an online uh, channel and opening up different channels and from traditional. So thanks very much. <laughs>